The first two episodes of Skeleton Crew are here, and how was it? I need you to take the controls. Okay. Neil? Uh, uh. Neil? Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for stopping by. My name is James. If you are new here, and if you are a fan of Star Wars, on the fence about Star Wars, or just like Skeleton Crew, hit that subscribe button. We'll be talking about it, reviewing it, and doing videos throughout the weeks discussing this series with Jude Law, of course. It is here, and I got to sit down and watch the first two episodes, like you all, on Disney Plus tonight. And I gotta tell you, I thought it was a blast. Is it gonna save Star Wars from the impending asteroid that is about to hit it, and all the fans crying a lot, it's dead, Star Wars is dead? I don't think so at this point, but I will say, I said in a video a little while ago, and I actually am going to say that I agree with what I said in that video, which is very unlike me. Uh, but what I said, though, was like, this is what Star Wars needs right now. And after watching the first two episodes, I absolutely believe that Skeleton Crew, what it is and what it represents is exactly what Star Wars needs. It's almost like a cleansing of the palate, this show. It's almost like, remember when you were a kid and you watched Star Wars? Here it is. Now, the show itself is not perfect by any means, of course, and, and what show is, but this one is not. It's got its flaws and whatnot. And the first episode was quite long, and it was all building up. It was all the backstory. It was all getting us to where we needed to go. It was all giving us the characters and the setting to show their great escape into the Star Wars galaxy far, far away, right? So they live on a planet, and the planet seems very suburban, seems very normal for, I guess, normal people, middle-class families, whatever going around, living their day-to-day -day lives, school's very important, they gotta go to class, their friends, whatnot. They really hit, like, Goonies hard, a flight navigator. They hit those, they hit Goonies, though, very, very harder than I thought. Like, when I heard it was gonna be, like, Goonies, I was like, okay, sure. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh, okay, you're really going after the Goonies vibe. So if you like those, like, 80s movies, like the Amblin ones, like they say, and I really didn't want to mention Amblin in this review of it, but it is, it really felt that way. The first episode, anyway, really felt that way and I feel like you needed to understand where these kids come from for the great adventure that is awaiting them in the galaxy right so they need to be normalized and then they leave and they're like oh everything is big and grand now this isn't what we're used to and you had to get that and I thought they hit the nail on the head with that I, I will say my favorite thing about this series first two episodes but the favorite thing about this series so far was just the way they started it you had text on the screen but then it went into space and there was a planet in a ship. And just like in A New Hope, you see something it is a little more aggressive, but dock the ship, basically. And it's pirates. And you're told this is a time of piracy. And pirates are everywhere. And, and I love that they dock the ship. And they get on. And the whole thing is an homage to 1977 Star Wars. To A New Hope. The whole thing is an homage. From, from you know, the, the guards to the stormtroopers, the rebels, the stormtroopers, to Darth Vader's entrance. And Darth Vader's entrance, I... I don't remember the name of the pirate guy, but it's obviously Jude Law, and he comes in with a really cool Star Wars mask. And you're like, all right, awesome, this is Star Wars, we got a cool mask. And Brutus is there, and they take you through, and you kind of understand now where the pirates are coming from, that they were supposed to have all of this treasure, and instead they kind of got screwed over, and there is no treasure. And they're like, what's up with the no treasure? So there's a bit of a mutiny, and now Brutus, the wolf dude, is in charge of these pirates. He's a new captain of them all and I love that 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 was that's how we get started right there and then we're transported to this planet to the kids and we understand their backstory and we see them and it really resonated with me in the terms of like when I was a kid you know you'd run through the woods and stuff like that to get to school and I did all that and I was like oh yeah remember that remember being a kid yeah, yeah it took me back and I thought it was fun I, they really kind of the one thing this show did very strong aside from the opening that I thought obviously was characters and character development they made you care about these characters understand who these characters were and want to root for these characters Neil who you know every time you see the merchandise for Neil if you're not you know cold-hearted you'd be like oh Neil looks like a cool character that that looks like that's going to be the character that we're all going to that we're all going to cling to in this series and he they hit it they knocked neil out of the park in this he's exactly what you want now i think this show would appeal to kids more so than adults because the cynicism is so strong in adults especially but you know what i, I you know you sit down you enjoy it and it like i said it takes you back to star wars to what you loved about star wars growing up as a kid and that's what it's got to come back to and so i don't think this is going to gain any new fans and i don't think it's going to lose any fans like like you know acolyte and things like that have in the past and, and i don't think star wars needs needs 
to get new fans. I don't think they're in a position to try to get new fans. I think they're in a position to hold tight and be say, have their fans and be like, yeah, we, we understand Star Wars, what you love about Star Wars, here it is. And it doesn't always have to be lore-driven and hardcore like that. It could be a fun adventure in this galaxy far, far away, and that is what Skeleton Crew is, and that's what makes it so unique, because you have that. You had Teak in there. You have Smee, this droid, who you know is protecting his captain at all costs and the way that he believes that they're the captain. And the fact that they're from this planet that no one has ever heard of, actually, that's not true. They're from this planet that everyone only believed was a myth. That is the long-lost city of eternal treasure. That's what they refer to it as. And so now the pirates are going to want to find their planet. Jude Law, who was a pirate, is going to want to find that planet to get the money back, to get the, the credits back, to win over the old pirates, to get to reclaim what was what is rightfully his or what he believes is rightfully his. But I think along the way we're going to learn certain things about him. He might even have another a hidden agenda on top of a hidden agenda for all we know there's a lot going on i love that they established the pirates i love that we got to see them and how they were kind of dirty pirates i like mando season three but i thought the pirates are a little comic-y and this one they, they you know even though it's more for kids they're really dark and gritty and that's what i was saying you need a kid's show to have a little bit of darkness to it right a little bit of fear put a little bit of fear in what the kids are watching let them think it's a little bit more adult than they are and they'll gravitate to it. And I think they really, really hit that with this in a way that, you know, is not really comparable to Stranger Things, even though, even though a lot of people will probably bring it that way. Because Stranger Things, I think, is a little darker, like a little further on the darker scale. Like this one's more, really more like the Goonies, where Stranger Things is more like it, right? Like it's a little bit darker, more, but it's definitely more adult oriented. Not quite it, but you know what, the, the kid stuff. But like this one really felt like this is a fun kid adventure that I think kids are going to be, when they see it, they'll be get lost in their imagination. They're going to do what the kids in this do and pretend that they're playing lightsabers, having lightsaber fights outside. And it was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see where it goes. We're reintroduced to Jude Law at the end of the second episode where they're like, oh, you are, he uses the force to get a key. And they're like, oh, you are a Jedi? And he says, shh. Can he keep a secret? They're not telling us if he's a Jedi. We Obviously, he's a pirate from the first episode with the mask because they sounded the same. So we don't know where his story is going to go, but I'm really excited to see where they're going to take us. And there's going to be there's so many Easter eggs. I'll do more videos on it, like I said. But this episode, I don't know. If you're looking to go back to the roots of what Star Wars was when you were a kid, when you were a kid, like Return of the Jedi kid, a New Hope kid, then I think Skeleton Crew is for you. I think it's fun. It's something that the whole family can watch. And honestly, the fact that it's releasing now at Christmas time during the holidays, it just it feels like a, a win-win, and I can't wait to see it next week. And mountains where none dead ago. If you hear this, don't give up. On Disney Plus. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Did you like Skeleton Crew? Are you looking forward to more? And is Jude Law good, bad, or ugly? <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time. May the force of others be with you.